Now, else when you uh, look back at it, uh, the film, what would you kind of think of the play of the defense? Well, it's, it's been like three weeks in a row now. Well, excuse me, four weeks in a row, four games in a row. We're playing physical, playing with great effort, a lot of intensity. There's still some things that need to be cleaned. You know, we, we make some mistakes that are being practiced during the week. Uh, of course, there's always going to be the unexpected that happens in the game. But these are things we've been working on with practicing. They seem to have it down, and, and we still have a few of those in games. Obviously, the production was good. You know, I think it was seven or nine punts, out of nine punts or something. Out of a lot of three and outs, got a couple of turnovers, really dropped three other turnovers. So we've got to start making those plays and ball. So I mean, there's a lot to be happy about, a lot to be pleased about, but I'm not satisfied because I, I think we continue to make some mistakes that, that are not acceptable. Ellis, both of your starting linebackers go down with injuries. What's the status of each of them? They, they're kind of day to day. You know, Cass got, he actually got kicked in the chin because of a mild concussion. He seemed pretty good today. Uh, we don't do much on Sundays, but he didn't practice. Uh, and, and Frost was moving around a little bit. He got, hit, he got fell on him on the interception, got fell on his leg. We got a bunch of them, one of them, the other got a bruised shin, we've got a bruised bone, uh, we've got, that Swain's got a very mild sprain. They did a lot of cut blocking, and it's, most of it was legal, but there were a few that were, were uh, not seen, not called, but it, it was a lot of that, a lot of ankles and stuff like that, but just, just banged up. Need, need these 48 hours for sure. Do you know, at least with Cass in particular, if he'll be able to play this? I don't, we, won't, we don't know it this time. Mm -hmm. You know, we they go through all that protocol and, and uh, certainly want to be on, on the side of caution with that. How did you think the guys played when they were out? Uh, the guys in place of them right. played pretty well. We did two of those missed checks where we got uh, messed up on uh, the check defense was when they were gone. Maybe they would have busted it too, but uh, the backups didn't handle it well. Uh, they played overall pretty well, you know, but there were some of the controls, the quarterbacking and the defense, there were some issues. And, you know, if, if the other guys don't practice, at least the, the, the other guy, the new guys, the young guys, they get more of the reps, they'll be more prepared next time. Just, look, just looking at you guys, remembering last year, just seems like you're more aggressive. Can you see the difference? Yeah, I, I, I think. You know, we played aggressively last year. I think probably what you see is people are a little more sure of what they're doing. Obviously, confusion causes hesitation. And last year, we were new in the system. Maybe we tried to do too much too early. But we had a lot of players that couldn't pull the trigger. You know, they weren't really sure of what they were doing. But it wasn't a lack of aggression. I think it was more of a lack of knowledge and, and uh, being comfortable within the system. There's no question that's better. Uh, so that's hopefully contributing to a lot, lot faster play. And, and that type of thing, but we do still need to get a little bit cleaner mentally. What have you seen out of Brandon Harris, LSU's quarterback? They've had some issues there, quarterback playing two guys, but Harris especially, what have you seen? You know, I haven't seen a lot of film yet. Uh, I did get to see some of the Mississippi State game where he came in at the end and made some really good throws, and they were playing a soft defense, trying to you know, more or less use the clock to their advantage, but he still made some really good throws. Uh, I, I know from just communication, just talking with someone that he was replaced the other day in the game and came in and really did pretty well. So I'm anxious to sit down and study the film. Uh, both the kids are good athletes. They're mobile. They can move around. Uh, you know, obviously they know more about them than we do, but I, I think both of them are very capable of moving their offense, and they both give a lot of problems with the mobility. We played a really good quarterback uh, Saturday, probably the best pocket quarterback to play so far this year. But he wasn't nearly as mobile as these kids from LSU, so that's another issue that we've got to contend with again. Usually at this point in the season, you have a good read on guys who film in four games, five games of the season. How difficult is it, as you said, you don't really know a lot about this Harris kid? Yeah, that, you always have that lack of, of knowledge. That's kind of always makes coaches nervous. But, uh, you know, we're looking to film. It, it really can't affect a whole lot of what we would do from a plan standpoint. But I think the player would have to be aware of it. Biggest thing to be aware of is athleticism and the things they can do to, to hurt you if we don't cage him up in the pocket. Now, let's just talk about the play of, of the front four and Devontae Lambert, you got this really come on. What have you seen out of him? Yeah, Devontae, I think the last two games have really really been a lot better. He, he had some production before, but I think his consistency is starting to come <coughs> out. A lot of things that, that the 
that you don't see that we see on film, even when he's not making a big play. His alignment, his technique, and his separation off of blocks and holding point, you know, and run game, all those things have gotten a lot better. And I think he had one of those big pass back downs the other day at a very critical time. He really has played a lot better. He's got, he got to start, you know, this last game and playing really at a really good level right now. Ellis, if one of those your linebackers that can't play, can either one of them do the things you're talking about, the, the checks and those things? Yeah, I, I think all our backers will be fine. You know, what happens to you is when you when you work a rotation in practice and you lose your starters right at the beginning of the game or right before a game, that's hard on the, on the backup to come in there and perform at the same level because he didn't get the same preparation. Uh, but I think, you know, if they're out a couple of days, that will help the backups get more repetition and be ready to play, more, more well-rested, I mean, excuse me, more well-prepared and ready to play. Would the contingency be to move Chris back to middle, or would you want to move Trey in there? What would you do? If, Ka if Cass can't go, but Chris can, how would you handle that? If Cass was out and Chris was still there, yeah. just step up Swain. Got it. Yep. Uh, Swain knows both. He played both the other night. He played better at Mike than he did at Will, because that's where he got his practice reps. But he's played both since he's been here, so he was able to win and, and help us. We, we kind of had a three-way rotation going for, about, for a little while. I, I'm really pleased with Kahari Hardy. You know, we just I haven't been able to get him in the lineup because some of the games we've played have been really tough, close games. And he shows things when he gets on the field. He's still got that skill set that some of our guys don't have. He's got great mobility, great coverage. Uh, I, I really think all those guys can play. I mean, I, I don't have any lack of confidence in them. It's just that the way we've been in some tight ball games, we haven't really played a lot of kids, and they haven't been able to break into rotation. Uh, Javier played the other night. He, he had some really good plays. And uh, he ended up taking over the bike linebacker when Chris was out on the dime package and graded out 100. You know, had had no, merit, no errors and made every play of supposed match. Four games in, you feel any more comfortable with the pass rush on? I think we're starting to find out how we're going to have to do it. I, I don't feel like we're any closer to, uh, to developing a real good four-man pass rush. We're still trying to find that right combination. Uh, but we're doing some things in our in our odd package, and we're also doing some other things to get some substitutions on the field for third down. It's an area that's got to keep improving. You know, if there was one area we weren't real good the other night, we weren't real good on third down. And uh, some of it's pass rush, not all of it. How, um, how often do players grade out 100% for you? That seems like it's Well, that was, you know, the dime package, that was that was seven for seven or nine for nine, I can't remember. But that, you know, that's, it is good though. It didn't make them have a mental error or have a technical error or anything like that. Now, if a kid plays 75, 80 snaps, very seldom, very seldom. I mean, you'll, you'll have one have a game like that every now and then. A couple more. What have you seen from the Cinco package thus far? Because you created, I know Chris rushed on, out of the Cinco on Montrevis' interception, and I believe at Kansas State there's a pretty big play that may be a turnover, I'm trying to remember now, in the Cinco package. Yeah. What, what has that addition this year presented and, and meant to the defense? It's helped us a little bit because, as we said, we're still trying to develop that four-man pass rush, and we're using that package, the Cinco package, to get some more speed on the field. There's three down linemen and two outside backers and six DBs. So, we're still kind of step by step adding a little bit of pressure schemes here and there. Didn't use some of them the other night. But, uh, it does put more speed on the field. Uh, you, you know, it's okay as long as you got a chance to substitute. If you get the pace game, you've got to be careful about having that group out there in certain situations. You wouldn't want to be in that package on third and short. You wouldn't want to be on the goal line. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you'd, you'd rather have that base or that dive package get it done. But, I think when we've used it, it's been pretty effective and we're still adding to it so that we can get more multiple with it and be able to play it in some situations. Is Montrevious taking a step last season? season? He had a really big game the other night. And I know there were flashy plays. You know, the caught, tipped the ball, runs it down the sideline, had another one, he batted down, you know, he recovered the fumble. But like a fumble he recovered, it was great pursuit for the ball. I mean, he was, he was chasing the guy who'd already broke the line of scrimmage. Uh, but he really did play well the other night. And uh, you know, kind of brought his level of play up to his skill set. All right.